Hi, I'm Gretchen Nielsen, Executive Director of From the Top. From the Top celebrates the talents and stories of young musicians from around the country. For over two decades, we have showcased these young musicians on our NPR radio show. But From the Top is more than a singular performance. We believe that young musicians have the power to create positive change in their communities. So part of our work is providing focused leadership training and community engagement opportunities for every young musician with whom we work. Each day, I'm inspired by the dedication, the persistence, the creativity of our young musicians. And that is why we're working so hard to bring you the incredible stories and transformative artistry of these young people. Whether you've been with us for weeks, months, years, and especially if you're new to us, thank you so much. If you believe in the work of our young musicians, please consider making a gift. Your support will ensure the future from the top and will fuel the many ways that we are able to amplify the soulful, the insightful, the joyful voices of our young musicians. Thank you. Well, good evening, folks, and welcome to From the Top's New Year's Rockin' Eve, Eve. I'm your host, pianist Peter Dugan, and we've got a festive evening in store. So we're going to be looking back on some of the highlights of 2020 this year, because remember, 2020 wasn't all bad. Now, that being said, it sort of was like, have you ever been to a restaurant and um, you had a delicious meal and really enjoyed every bite, but then at the end, you look down at your plate and you see the woody stem of a piece of asparagus that was a bit too thick. You see a couple of tails of shrimp, the sauce that's been kind of smeared around, and suddenly you feel a bit disgusted and you just want to get rid of that plate and move on with dessert. That's kind of what 2020 has been like, except it wasn't a good meal. You weren't at a nice restaurant. You were eating McDonald's in the car, one hand on the wheel, one hand with the, with the cheeseburger, the Big Mac. The whole car smells like grease now, and you don't know how you're going to get rid of that smell other than just burn the car down and get a new car. But there have been some silver linings, as I was saying, and one of those has been all of our fantastic virtual concerts. Checking in with our alumni all across the country and hearing them perform in their homes has been a real guiding light for us as we've made it through these past 40 weeks. It's hard to believe that it was March 27th when we had our first From the Top live stream. It was featuring the Davison duo, two young guitarists, siblings Jack and Elle. They were first on our show back in 2018 when they were just 10 and 13 years old. They're from Palo Alto, California, and they stepped up and became our first live stream. It was their first live stream show ever, uh, so it took a lot of bravery for them to do it, but wow, they knocked it out of the park. Uh, it was a fantastic performance that I'll never forget, and I'll never forget the outpouring of love and support that we saw in the comment section. So get into the chat now and do the same as we revisit their performance of the first movement of Astor Piazzolla's Tango Suite.
my name is Elle Davison. And my name is Jack Davison, and we are the Davison Duo. Thank you for tuning in to From the Top's first ever live concert. So, like Jack said, this is From the Top's first time going live, but it's also our first time. So, we're coming to you from Palo Alto, California, and for us as performers and guitarists, it's a little weird to be playing guitar in front of an iPad, but you know, you kind of just got to hope somebody's watching. Ah, the early days of quarantine, before Zoom was a household word, when we were still counting the rolls of toilet paper we had left, and before some of us had discovered the workday mullet outfit. Business on top, PJs on the bottom. <laughs> well, one silver lining was that for us musicians, we got to kind of reconnect with what makes us tick, you know? Um, without the distraction of all the traveling and learning the rep for the next concert, we got to sit back and settle into our favorite music and to remember what really matters, uh, the heart, the home, the family behind the musician. So let's take a look back at the Marx sisters who joined us from their family home in Washington State, where they revisited some of the music of their folk-filled childhood. Check it out. Thank you. 
Uh, music can just be so invigorating. And after the early success of these first few virtual concerts, we knew we had to keep it going, no matter what. Now, one of the obstacles we had to face was repertoire. Of course, with the lockdown, folks couldn't get together to play chamber music or to have collaborative partners, so it meant relying on solo music. Now, fortunately, a fella named Johann Sebastian Bach had an idea to write some of the most sublime music ever composed for solo unaccompanied instruments. And that certainly came in handy during this pandemic. So we're going to feature now a few of the Bach highlights from the past few months. We're going to start with Bianca Chubankan from Chicago. Then we're going to hear from flutist Nadira Navruzov from New York. And finally, we'll have Brandon Leonard from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Enjoy. Thank you. 
What a beautiful meditation uh, to hear those performances. Just really brings a lot of peace and a lot of comfort uh, during these times. Now, don't let the music fool you. If you know from the top, you know we like to have a good time and we never take ourselves too seriously. So let's take a look back now on some of the unexpected fun that we had over the course of these past few months on our virtual concerts. Yeah, so um, this is my brother, Brayden. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> you hear someone say petite mini golden doodle, you know this is going to be a cute dog. This is Nada. I used to be the kind of guy, I, I've been known in college for dinner, I used to eat eight hard-boiled eggs. That was kind of my style. <laughs> I think maybe you watched um, The Beauty and the Beast too many times when Gaston <laughs> sings about, you know, when I was a lad, I ate 12 dozen eggs or whatever. It is. <laughs> That's right. That's it, right? That's it. <laughs> Roughly exactly. the size of a barge. <laughs> what, what do you see as your future? In other words, you guys are still so young, but are you feeling like your dream is to get out there and be a professional musician or do you want to do you see yourself going somewhere else when i get older i want to be a surgeon because i like blood and i like organs and i like extracting things and when when i go outside i usually find bugs and kill them to squeeze their blood and guts out <laughs> well <laughs> um, any new skills that you all have taken on i found many different ways to cook a bean <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have so many cans of beans oh my gosh yeah, for our Sixth grade graduation, we got this um, fat head. So <laughs> it's basically a replica, um, except on a big stick. So I think that's kind of funny. Serious, serious stuff. And uh, the kind of content that really needs to be seen right now. Um, but seriously, thank you all so much for supporting our efforts, for watching our shows. Clearly, we have a blast doing it. It's hard to believe, but it's been 24 virtual concerts that we've offered. It's been nearly 60 musicians from 12 different states, and the series is approaching 100,000 views. So yeah, thanks for just being such great fans. We love you all so much. Um, I'd like to ask if you've been enjoying the show, would you consider making a donation to our efforts tonight? We are just 24 hours away from our year end goal and we're so close to reaching it. Um, I know so many of you have already given so generously, uh, but if you could make one final offering to help us get past the finish line, we'd really appreciate it. It makes it possible for us to continue to support our young musicians for years to come. Hi. My name is Kristen Ketchis and I'm a freelance harpist based in Boston. I performed on From the Top twice when I was 13 years old, first as a soloist and second as a member of a harp ensemble. I also got the chance to intern at From the Top when I was in college, so I got to see how the show works behind the scenes. Recently, I had the amazing experience of seeing my own student, Olivia Lee, have her first performance on From the Top. And Olivia had an incredible few days with From the Top. Uh, she especially loved the arts leadership portion of the program. And now as a teacher on the other side of things, I can even more clearly see the, the positive impact that this program has on young musicians. And for that, I'd like to say thank you for supporting From the Top. Thank you again for joining us. It's been such a blast to have you with us as we delve back into the archives of the year and relive some of these fabulous moments. 
And I want to wish you all a very, very happy new year. To take us out of the program, we have two family offerings, I suppose you could say. Family tributes. The first comes from the Chen family in Chicago. They gave a really heartfelt and timely performance of Lift Every Voice and Sing. And then finally, a little offering from my family, my wife, Kara, who's a mezzo-soprano and also an alum of From the Top, and yours truly on the piano, and my musical brother, Mr. Charles Yang, who is also a From the Top alum and one of our co-hosts and creatives. The three of us collaborated remotely uh, early on in the summer for this performance. So first the Chen family, then our performance, and once again, Happy New Year. I hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope that 2021 brings great joy and great music. And keep coming back to our virtual concerts. We have so much more fun in store for you in the coming year.
Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful night and happy new year. Party hard tomorrow. My resolution is to get a haircut. And thanks for being with us. Good night.